Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth as K-State. You guessed it, they lost again. Uh, it has kind of been the theme for the Wildcat season at this point. Now losers of seven of their last eight. Again, as we've talked about, the only win is against uh, a Kansas team that is very flawed on the road right now. K-State, in some ways, found a way to lose this game in a different way. But in a lot of other ways, they found a way to lose the game in the same ways that they had been doing it. Um, for the second straight game, they managed their turnovers better than they had at a lot of other points this season. K-State only turned the ball over 13 times in this game, uh, but something they did poorly was send Texas to the free throw line a lot. Texas shot the ball 24 times at the free throw line. K-State only went to the line 16 times. And if you've paid attention a little bit deeper into K-State this year, you know that one of their attributes early on that was helping them was that they were getting to the free throw line more than their opponents. And they need to get to the free throw line more than their opponents to win games because they are so bad offensively that they got to get the free points when they can take them. They were not getting them today. And then they were handing them out to Texas on the other end. And that is a losing formula every single time. The reason why I say though, that things were a little bit different than what we had come to expect when K-State loses a game is they were better from three than Texas today. Although the thing that was the same was K-State was still terrible shooting the basketball. This is still an offensively inept team. But Texas was 3 of 19 from 3. That's just 16%. So K-State, even though they were 26%, they're slightly better. And hey, 5 of 19, that's an improvement from only making one on Saturday. And you look around, and another big key for K-State this year is if the big three plays well, and really the only three that can do anything for you on offense, Kaluma, Perry, and Carter, then you've got a chance. That didn't happen tonight. Arthur Kloom has 15 points, but he missed 12 shots. He was 4 of 16. That is terrible. Cam Carter, just another putrid performance from him. 8 points, 2 of 10 from the field. He turned the ball over 4 times. He only played 28 minutes. So Jerome Tang realized this guy is not helping us tonight. He played very few minutes relative to what you normally get out of him. And Tyler Perry, who I think has gotten a lot more heat than what he has deserved at points this season. He struggled night. He turned the ball over six times, but he was the best shooter of the group at 13 points, five of 13 from the field, and three of eight from three. So he really carried K-State in that aspect. David Gasson gave you another good scoring night. He had the rebounds to go with it. He's just so bad at the free throw line that he becomes a liability. I think David Gasson, most of the time, is actually one of the the better players on this roster and knowing what to do offensively. He gets himself in the right positions, but he is so bad at the free throw line that you very rarely see it benefit because he does get to the line a decent amount. And you think, Oh, here we go again. And that's exactly what happened tonight. So those are all just things that immediately come at you with this K state team. But the number one thing is, and I saw, you know, early on, Reed Geddes on the broadcast was kind of questioning K State's effort. I know some other people were. Look, your effort doesn't lead to only being down five on the road against Texas. I know Texas has had their flaws this year, but Texas is a talented team. If K State really didn't have the effort and energy early in this game, then they would have been down by more than that. They would not have been in this game at halftime. I think really what just it comes down to is that K-State is so bad offensively. They they lack serious talent outside of the top three guys, and even those guys have serious flaws, that it's tough to tell if this team's playing hard or not. They make offense look that hard to play that you can't tell if they're actually giving real effort or if they're just terrible. And it's re it really is they're just terrible. And at this point, nobody can defend that this team is terrible. I, I don't even want to hear, you know, like the, the coaching staff, like I, they're going to say it to stick up for their guys, but you know, nobody even in K-State basketball should take offense to being told that they are terrible on offense. They are terrible on offense right now. They are now shooting, probably getting close to under 30% on the season from three as a team. That is bad. The turnovers have been terrible. The decision-making is really bad for this team. And on top of that, you just don't have the personnel that can get it done. Because you only have three guys that are viable offensive weapons on this team. I mean, that that is the truth. And one of them in Cam Carter, he might have the lowest basketball IQ on this team. He makes some really bad decisions, and it has been a stretch over the last three weeks now where he just – you scratch your head thinking, what was the plan there? 
And now he has paired that with the last two games. He's given you nothing scoring wise either. I know he gets the eight points, but you know, some of those were free throws at the end. He was bad on Saturday against TCU. There is just so much with this K-State team that you can point at as a flaw. I have thought all year, this team doesn't really understand how to play the game of basketball, and they proved that again tonight. And in addition to that, Day-Day Ames was the cherry on top tonight. That was terrible what he did for his flagrant two that got him booted from the game. There's just, there's no excuse for why that happens. And, you know, you can say, hey, he got caught up in the moment, all this other stuff. You know, I, I get it, but getting caught up in the moment should never lead you to whacking a dude across the head and not making a play on the ball when he's on a fast break on the basketball floor. Like that was just, that was just another showcase of stupidity from this K-State basketball team. And that's stuff that isn't going to get fixed. And I think most people probably realize that throughout this season, but those top three guys, when they are on and when this team does the right things, they can be capable of competing with anybody in this league. We saw it because they've beaten Baylor and Kansas. We have also seen it because despite the fact that they have dug themselves some massive holes against Texas and BYU and Texas Tech and, and Iowa State, they have come back to be in those games in the waning minutes of the game. But at the end of the day, you, your basketball IQ and the level of knowledge you have of how to play the game correctly is going to shine through. It's not always the most talented teams that win games. It's the smartest teams that win games. And if you combine smarts with talent, then you've got a really good team right there. And this K-State team right now, you can. the only way that you can mask deficiencies is by playing smart. And that's the one thing that you can, without a doubt, get better in as the season goes on. Because a bad shooter at the start of the season, maybe he raises his percentage by two, three points five points if, if you're wanting to be lucky, that's not going to have a great bearing on it. But you can get smarter as a basketball player. You play more basketball. You should go, okay, I've done this before. It's ended with bad results. Let me get better here. And that's on Jerome Tang and his staff to get this team coached up and really top better. This staff, I think they need to be less of coaches right now. they got to be more teachers. And the issue is, is that you want somebody to blame that on in this moment. And so you say, well, th if that's a coaching thing, like I just said, that is a coaching thing. I think Jerome Tang's doing it. The fact that this team is 15 and 11 and has won five conference games and beaten some of the teams that they have, that almost feels like a miracle based off what we've seen from K-State over the last month plus now. Because I just think that this team, I think Jerome Tang can go in and tell these guys repeatedly, hey, don't do this. Maybe try to do this. Be, be a little bit better here. Hey, look for this. I just, I just don't think that these guys, most of the players on this K-State basketball team, can comprehend what he is telling them. And when you lack talent and you lack certain abilities and then you can't back it up by even trying to help yourself out by playing smarter, you're going to have problems, and K-State has run into serious problems tonight uh, and, and over the course of their season now. So 62-56, to 56, they lose to Texas. Um, unless they do something wildly – unlikely to happen in Big 12 basketball, which is win multiple road games and then take care of really good opponents, ranked opponents at home, uh, because BYU and Iowa State still come to Bramlage. Uh, this team, it, the, the NCAA tournament, if it was on life support, the plug was pulled tonight. So kick that out of your mind. And I would say at this point, this team really needs to decide if they want to step up and have any dignity with how this season plays out for them. I understand that there was a lot of things that happened over the course of this season that is out of their control and has certainly been a negative impact to this team. Naquan Tomlin would make this team better. Quez Glover being available would make this team better. That is true. But you know what? Neither of those guys have played in a single game this season for this team. And by the time you get to game 26, you should maybe be a little bit better at figuring out how to play with the circumstances you have. Because at some point, you know, hey, uh, day number one, your car breaks down on the way to work. Okay, you call the boss. Hey, he probably understands it. Not going to be in today. That happens. Because how else are you going to get there? And now some people would say, well, you, you call your wife. You call public transportation. There are ways to get you there still. But you get that first day. Second day comes around. Hey, I'm just going to work from home. Uh, the car's still getting fixed, all this other stuff. But you know what? You get down the road. 
a week and a half later and you're still not showing up, your boss is going to be like, hey, it doesn't matter at this point what's going on with your car. You have to find a way to be at work. That is your job. It's the same way, like, if the computers went down when I was working at the radio station, it wasn't like, oh, well, I guess can't work today. Well, you still have to find a way to do your job. And this K-State basketball team, they still have to find a way to do their job. They haven't done it this season. And I get I get the argument. Big picture, end of the season, you say, what went wrong? Well, it's the fact that you thought you were going to have Naquan Tomlin and Quest Glover, and they're not a part of this team. They would have made you better. Would have changed the outcome. That is true. But in season, this team can only play with what they have. And with what we've seen at different times, they can be better than what they have played and what the results have shown. But they just don't seem to have the will or the want to get better and finding a way to make that happen. So you're playing for really just the lack of embarrassment down the stretch because this team, they have not won a game outside of the one against KU in the last month. And you're looking at what's coming up. It's not out of the question this team finishes with a losing record now. Based on what is left and how everything is looking for them, they have to step up and get better right now. And I have serious questions on if they can do it. But this team needs to show some pride. They need to show some growth and some development. And I think that starts with I think this starts with the coaching staff. They've had their flaws this year. But overall, I mean, I don't know what more they can do. I, I think I used the analogy with Drew that if if you have – uh, uh, somebody tells you, hey, go put this fence up and you go out there and the hammer you've been given only has the handle and not actually the head. And no, oh, you know, I'm like, I'm going to have a pretty tough time, you know, putting these nails in and, and putting this fence up. That's kind of Jerome Tang right now. I think he's standing around with the handle of the hammer. He doesn't have the head and that's a problem. So there is a, there's a, there's a lot to get right with this team and we'll see if they can do it come Saturday when BYU uh, comes to town. It seems like uh, an unlikelihood at this point. And then they'll have a short turnaround and West Virginia comes in and boy, you lose at home to West Virginia. Uh, that that would be brutal because that is not a very good basketball team right now. They, they haven't even been competitive uh, over the last three, four times out. So we'll see how it goes, but tough one for K-State tonight in Austin. Although, much of the same, so they're probably uh, hardened to it at this point. And you have to wonder, like, you lose the games in so many of the same ways uh, at this point. Like, are they so numb to it and so used to it that it's not even impacting them and you're not getting that sense of urgency that you need and all these other things that make you want to improve? Uh, that's something that I would start to think about. So uh it's it's been a it's been a disastrous season for k-state to say the least and they certainly have done themselves no favors despite the fact that situations put them in really bad spots both can be true you can have really unfortunate things to happen to you and you can also continue to make them worse for yourselves and that's what k-state has done throughout this season and that's why they're in a position that they're in now where uh, they're you know if things don't go their way they're they're not going to finish with an above 500 record, and they're not going to even play in the NIT, uh, which is is unfortunate. So that will do it for me. I'm Mason Vogt. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want a cheerier topic, head over to kstateonline.com. Read up on Dylan Duff, the latest commit to the K-State football team, first one of 2025. You can also go watch the breakdown video where Drew Galloway, our recruiting guru, gives us everything we need to know about Dylan Duff and the recruitment. So uh, be a little happier. Think about K-State football, Chris Kleiman, and all the good things going on over there. So K-State loses it tonight in Austin, 62-56. to